Yo, what's up all my international players? Today we're here to talk about jump rope mistakes. Now here's the deal, when you're first getting started with the jump rope, you're gonna make mistakes, there's no way around it. This video is to make sure you don't make the most common mistakes that I personally used to make myself. Story time. So about 13, 14 months ago, Dan and I came together to create Zen Dude Fitness in a real way. We were like, yo, let's go all in on jump rope. And so I knew when I went all in on jump rope, I had to figure out how to jump rope like a ninja. And the way I was able to transition over the last 13, 14 months from going from a novice to now being pretty skilled with the jump rope is by avoiding these top jump rope mistakes I'm about to get into in this video. Now before I get into these top jump rope mistakes and how to, to avoid them, I wanna mention that we still got this free four week challenge for y'all. So if you wanna join that, you can click the link in the first line of the description, or you can click the button in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. Also the jump rope that's gonna be used throughout this video you can grab. Let's get into this video, shall we? All right, the first thing we're gonna start off with is where you're holding the jump rope. A lot of people don't talk about this, but it's extremely important. And so we're gonna dive deep into where to put your hands on the rope right now. And so you can see here, you have very little control if you're grabbing the bottom of the jump rope. The, the rope is loose and it makes it harder to do tricks or just get into a good rhythm. What you wanna do is choke up on the handles so your fingers are very close to the actual steel cable and the ball bearing. This will give you a lot more control of the rope and make the spin a lot smoother. Next, we just want to talk to you about the importance of having a good, high quality jump rope. There's a lot of jump ropes out there and a lot of really inexpensive ones. And the reason why we talk about the cross rope so much is because it is the highest quality rope out there and it does make a significant difference in your ability to jump rope with more skill and your ability to jump rope, period. So the next thing we're gonna cover here is a very subtle example of what it looks like to have your wrists too far apart. And so you can see here, when your wrists are too far apart, when you try to do tricks, for example, the crisscross, you end up tripping over the rope because it's spread too long, right? And so that means there's not enough depth on the rope to be able to make it underneath your feet. And so you can see here, it's very evident that if your wrists are just a few degrees closer to each other, so you're bringing your, your as you can see I just demonstrated there, you're actually bringing your uh, wrist closer to each other, it's easier to do crisscrosses, it's easier to just get more fluid with the jump rope and be able to get a consistent rhythm with what you're doing. And so a beginner mistake a lot of people make is they have their, their wrists too far apart so they trip over the rope. So just remember whenever you're doing any tricks, bring your wrists just a little bit closer together and it's going to feel a lot smoother for you. Next thing we want to talk about is having just straight up good posture when you're jumping rope. You want to create this nice alignment from this crown of your head down through the balls of your feet. So as you're hopping and you're jumping rope on the balls of your feet, you want to keep your shoulders back and down and you want to really focus on keeping that core and those glutes tight so you're not bending over, you have good posture throughout the movement. The next thing we want to talk about is how high you're going to be jumping off the ground when you are jumping rope. And so a lot of people when they first get started try to jump high in the air so they don't skip so they don't trip over the rope, but really that, that's the opposite of what ends up happening. When you jump higher in the air, a lot of times your hands come up, and so when your hands come up, you are also bringing the bottom of the jump rope up and you end up tripping over the rope. When you come just in a half inch or an inch off the ground, you have much more control. You're able to spin the rope more smoothly and your body isn't, again, isn't flailing around all over the place and you're controlling this movement The final thing I want to talk about is just your ability to get into a flow state while you're jumping rope. If you're really self-conscious about yourself and you're worried about you know, tripping up or people see you tripping up, just let all of that go. All that you know, worry about like messing up or like not you know, getting as good as you want to as fast as you'd like to, like don't worry about that stuff. The whole point of jumping rope is just to take care of yourself. So the fact that you're even doing it is a win in itself. Now beyond that, if you wanna focus on enjoying it even more, you wanna really just get into the state of being where the only thing that exists is every skip of that rope. 
And so you wanna even close your eyes sometimes and focus on just the movement of that rope or if you're listening to music, just the beat as every beat drops. And so put yourself in a state of being where you're completely present and you're gonna get better at jump rope so much faster. Finally, if you've enjoyed this video, if you like this video, please give it a like. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel. Zen New Nation is growing day by day. We appreciate each and every one of you so, so much. So another sub means another family member. So come on in, join us, we'll hook you up. Thanks so much for watching this video. Zen Dudes out.